I'd like to invite forward um, Deacon Don and Sister Mary to lead us in our stations. So now we have our way of the cross. And we, in fact, we'll start with Jesus said to St. Faustina that if she was too busy at three o'clock to say the stations that she could say the three o'clock prayer. So we'll say the three o'clock prayer just to start. O oh, blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust, I trust in, in you. you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust, I trust in you. you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. And the way of the cross. Merciful Lord, my master, I want to follow you faithfully. I desire to imitate you in my life in a way that will be more and more perfect. Therefore, I am praying that by meditating on your passion, you will give me the grace of a greater understanding of the mysteries of spiritual life. Mary, mother, ever faithful to Christ, lead me in the footsteps of the sorrowful passion of your son and obtain for me the graces necessary to fruitfully observe of this way of the cross. I offer it for the intention of, and here we can think of whatever intention we came with on our hearts today, whether for ourselves or our families, it might be someone who's ill with cancer or a terminal illness or whatever the situation is, that I've no doubt everybody here has a situation that needs God's intervention. And this, the hour of great mercy, is a powerful time to pray for whatever your intention is, and especially the stations of the cross. That he said to Faustina, he'll grant whatever we ask once it's in conformity with his will, so that we can, with great confidence in this hour, now ask for what our intentions are, ask for what's on our hearts. So here we just take a minute just to pause and see what is the intention we want to include in this holy hour, in this Stations of the Cross. So on our first station, Jesus is condemned to death. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false witness against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. And Jesus said to Saint Faustina, do not be surprised that you are sometimes unjustly accused. I myself first drank this cup of undeserved suffering for the love of you. When I was before Herod, I obtained a grace for you, namely, that you would be able to rise above human scorn and follow faithfully in my footsteps. We are sensitive to words and quickly want to answer back without taking any regard as to whether it is God's will that we should speak. A silent soul is strong. No adversities will harm it if it perseveres in silence. The silent soul is capable of attaining the closest union with God. Merciful Jesus, help me to accept every human judgment and do not let me ever condemn you in my neighbor. On our second station, Jesus takes up his cross. 
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. And Jesus said to St. Faustina, Do not be afraid of sufferings. I am with you. The more you will come to love suffering, my daughter, the purer your love for me will be. Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of communal life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions, for humiliations at the hands of others, for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for dying to myself, for lack of recognition in everything, for upsetting of all my plans. Merciful Jesus, teach me to value the toil of life, sickness and every suffering. Teach me to carry this cross every day with love. On the third station, Jesus falls the first time. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. Jesus said to St. Faustina, my daughter, write that involuntary offenses of souls do not hinder my love for them or prevent me from uniting myself with them. But voluntary offenses, even the smallest, obstruct my graces and I cannot lavish my gifts on such souls. Oh my Jesus, how prone I am to evil and this forces me to be constantly vigilant. But I do not lose heart. I trust God's grace, which abounds in the worst misery. Merciful Lord, save me from every voluntary and conscious infidelity, even the smallest. On our fourth station, Jesus meets his blessed mother. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that he will be contradicted. 
and you yourself the sword will pierce. And Jesus said to Saint Faustina, listen my daughter, although all the works that come into being by my will are exposed to great sufferings, consider whether any of them has been subject to greater difficulties than that work which is directly mine, the work of redemption. You should not worry too much about adversities. I saw the Blessed Virgin. She held me close to herself and said to me, be courageous, do not fear apparent obstacles, but fix your gaze upon the passion of my son, and in this way, you will be victorious. Mary, Mother of Mercy, be with me always, and especially in suffering. In the same way as you were on the way of the cross of your Son. On the fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry his cross. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. And Jesus said to Saint Faustina, I permit these adversities in order to increase his merit. I do not reward for good results, but for the patience and hardship undergone for my sake. O oh my Jesus, you do not give a reward for successful performance of a work, but for the goodwill and labor undertaken Therefore, I am completely at peace, even if all my undertakings and efforts should be thwarted or should come to naught. If I do all that is in my power, the rest is not my business. O oh Jesus, my Lord, let every thought, word, and action be undertaken exclusively out of love for you. Purify my intentions. On the sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by men, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from, from whom men hide their faces, spurned and as we held him in no esteem. And Jesus said to Saint Faustina, know that whatever good you do to any soul, I accept it as if you had done it to me. I am learning how to be good from Jesus, 
from him who is goodness itself, so that I may be called a daughter of the heavenly Father. Great love can change small things into great ones, and it is only love which lends value to our actions. Lord Jesus, my Master, make merciful my eyes, hands, lips, heart. Keep transforming me into mercy. On the seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore thee, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, Jesus said to St. Faustina, the cause of your falls is that you relied too much upon yourself and too little on me. Without special help from me, you are not even capable of accepting my graces. Jesus, do not leave me alone. You know, Lord, how weak I am. I am an abyss of wretchedness. I am nothingness itself. So what will be so strange if you leave me alone and I fall? So you, Jesus, must stand by me constantly like a mother by a helpless child, and even more so. May your grace, Lord, support me so that I may not constantly fall into the same errors. And when I fall, help me to get up and praise your mercy. On the eighth station, Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because, because by, by your, your holy, holy cross, cross you have redeemed the, the world. world. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves. And Jesus said to St. Faustina, Oh, how pleasing to me is living faith. I desire that you, all, you would all have more faith at the present time. I fervently beg the Lord to strengthen my faith so that in my drab everyday life, I will not be guided by human dispositions, but by those of the Spirit Oh, how everything drags man towards the earth. But lively faith maintains the soul in the higher regions and assigns self-love its proper place, that is to say, the lowest one. Merciful Lord, I thank you for holy baptism 
and the grace of faith. Again and again I call, Lord, I believe, increase my faith. On the ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy cross, cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. And Jesus said to Saint Faustina, my child, know that the greatest obstacle to holiness are discouragement and exaggerated anxiety. These will deprive you of the ability to practice virtue. I am always ready to forgive you. As often as you beg for it, you glorify my mercy. My Jesus, despite your graces, I see and feel all my misery. I begin my day with battle and end it with battle. As soon as I conquer one obstacle, ten more appear to take its place. But I am not worried because I know that this is the time of struggle, not peace. Merciful Lord, I give you this, which is exclusively my own property, that is, sin and human weakness. I beg of you, let my wretchedness be drowned in your unfathomable mercy. On the tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When the soldiers took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier, they also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of the scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus was suddenly standing before me, stripped of his clothes, his body completely covered with wounds, his eyes flooded with tears and blood, his face disfigured and covered with spittle. The Lord then said to me, The bride must res resemble her betrothed. I understood these words to their very depth. There is no room for doubt here. My likeness to Jesus must be through suffering and humility. Jesus, gentle and humble of heart, touch my heart and make it like your own.
eleven station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. And Jesus said to St. Faustina, My pupil, have great love for those who cause you suffering. Do good to those who hate you. O oh my Jesus, you know what efforts are needed to live sincerely and unaffectedly with those from whom our nature flees, or with those who deliberately or not have met us suffer. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. At such times, more than at others, I try to discover the Lord Jesus in such a person. And for this same Jesus, I do everything for such people. O purest love, rule in all your plentitude in my heart and let me love even the things that humanly speaking are impossible to love. On the twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. And Jesus said to St. Faustina, All this is for the salvation of souls. Consider well, my daughter, what you are doing for their salvation. Then I saw the Lord nailed to the cross. When he had hung on it for a while, I saw a multitude of souls crucified like him. Then I saw a second multitude of souls and a third. The second multitude were not nailed to their crosses, but were holding them firmly in their hands. The third were neither nailed to their crosses nor holding them firmly in their hands, but were dragging their crosses behind them and were discontent. Jesus then said to me, Do you see these souls, those who are like me, in the pain and contempt they suffer, will be like me also in glory. And those who also resemble me less in pain and contempt will also bear less resemblance to me in glory. O oh, Jesus, Jesus, my Savior, hide me in the depth of your heart so that strengthened by your grace, I may imitate you in the love of the cross and participate in your glory. On the 13th station, 
Jesus is laid in the arms of his blessed mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because the Holy Cross you have redeemed the world. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, acquaintances stood at a distance. And Jesus said to St. Faustina, Most dear to me is the soul that strongly believes in my goodness and has complete trust in me. I heap my confidence upon it and give it all it asks. I fly to your mercy, compassionate God, who alone are good. Although my misery is great and my offenses are many, I trust in your mercy because you are the God of mercy. And from time immemorial, it has never been heard of, nor do heaven or earth remember that a soul trusting in your mercy has been disappointed. Merciful Jesus, every day increase within me trust in your mercy, so I may always and everywhere give witness to your infinite goodness and love. On the 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with the burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. And Jesus said to St. Faustina, You are not yet in your homeland, so go, fortified by my grace, and fight for my kingdom and human souls. Fight as a king's child would, and remember that the days of your exile will pass quickly, and with them, the possibility of earning merit for heaven. I expect from you a great number of souls who will glorify my mercy for all eternity. Every soul you have entrusted to me, Jesus, I will try to aid with prayer and sacrifice so that your grace can work in them. O great lover of souls, my Jesus, I thank you for the immense confidence with which you have deigned to place souls in our care. Merciful Lord, I pray for the souls that you have entrusted to me. Do not let any of them perish, not even one. O oh my Jesus, my only hope, thank you for the book which you have opened before my soul's eyes. That book is your passion, which you underwent for the love of me. It is from this book that I have learned how to love God and souls. In this book, they are found for us inexhaustible treasures. O oh Jesus, how few souls understand you in your martyrdom of love. Happy the soul that has come to understand 
the love of the heart of Jesus.